Hello, everyone. I'm Somia Sri Raman, president of Britbox and a diehard fan of British television. And I thank you all for joining the session today. Um, I'm going to start off with sort of an aside. If any of you watched news this weekend, um, I don't know if you saw coverage of the spacecraft. Did you? Do you remember? Okay. You know, you know the spacecraft that was launched, the rocket that was launched um, in Florida this on Friday, I think. SpaceX Falcon 9. That's right, SpaceX Falcon 9. That's where it was. So I don't know if you remember what the pilot said when he took off. Okay, I'm going to play something to remind you. This Thursday, May 4th, May the 1st, be with you. Who, me? See the very first Firth. I like to be precise, sir. Be seduced by the Darcy side of the Firth. Even feel a great disturbance in the Firth. Just trust the Firth. We're not that different. A career-spanning collection of Colin Firth's greatest television roles. Watch it all on BritBox, Thursday, May 4th. Uh, So he said, may the, may the fourth be with you. So here's our version of it, right? So we're not bringing supplies to the International Space Station, but we're bringing you Colin Firth. And we think that that's the reason we've been able to secure ourselves a really nice and defined space in such a short time. And, and I'm hoping that I can talk you through our journey and leave you all with a few nuggets that you can take back, okay? So what is Bird Box? Birdbox is the love child of two of UK's pre preeminent broadcasters, ITV and BBC, public service broadcasters, albeit it was conceived here in New York, just a few blocks on 6th Avenue, just a few blocks north, south, south, south. thank you, <laughs> just a few blocks south of here. And it is the biggest and the best of British television here in the US, and we are a subscription video on demand platform. Now, taking a trip up history, is it up history or down history? Through. I don't know, through history? OK. The, the first television broadcast, I'm sure many of you know this, the first television broadcast happened in 1928. And only four televisions actually were able to watch it, right? So four people saw it, because televisions were not commercial by then. Now, fast forward about 40 years, and Neil Armstrong's Moon landing was watched by 53 million people here in the US. Fast forward another 50 years. And this year, if you will remember, a, a little known streamer announced that about 80 million people watched Bird Box, not Bird Box, Bird Box. And the, you know, the, the fascinating thing was this 80 million was watched over four weeks. And I think that's what makes on-demand television, very much in demand. Yes, I'm gonna play on a few words here. But I'm not here to talk to you about spacecrafts or moon landings or even post-apocalyptic movies, even though Sandra Bullock's one of my favorites. This is, this is a journey of how all of those have made Bird Box a possibility and even a thriving success. We're focused on, del on delivering you the best of British television by focusing on two Cs. I think, I'm sure some of you know the four C's of Jeff Bezos's existence. Ours is just the two C's, the consumer and the content. And I think that's all it comes down to. The US landscape, you know, has evolved from five broadcast nets in the 50s to about 50 cable nets in the 80s. And today, there's hundreds of apps in the streaming world. And, it's, and we know that fragmented television is in. And while this, con this crowded marketplace is intimidating, it has allowed us to focus our content to our consumer. And I have to use a cricket analogy. We're talking about British television. So I have to say, you know that in the old, old world of linear television, you needed boundaries to win. But in our world, we can do singles and doubles just fine. Right? And, and I think that it is this marketplace that has made it possible for people to expect that they can watch what they want, when they want, and how they want it. And that is why BritBox thrives. 
In a world where TV, TV networks must cater to an audience, an ad audience, sorry, you all know this, and a global streamers must need to be everything to everybody, we are a something for somebody. And this is a very important part of why, why we believe in the fact that when, when you have the whole world stretching against you, you have to stay focused. And how is, but how is this possible? Now, I've been going to CES for more years than I can count. And every year, you know, there is there's this white paper that gets published about the streamers. And they talk about how, how many streaming services they think an average household will have. Right? And about four years ago, I remember this number was about 1.4. This year, that number was 3 plus. And, and, and I think what's happened is, as, as the streaming landscape evolves, it's made it possible for people like us to exist, and not just exist, but thrive. Right? We know we're not likely the only SVAD in someone's kitty, but we know for a fact that we are, we are an add-on service that fulfills someone's specific needs. Right? And that's what sets us apart from the rest. <coughs> and I believe that in order to succeed in the world of SVAD and to super serve our two C's of content and consumer, three conditions must be met. Right? The first, access. Right? Access is reach. Access is how people, people find your, your service, your platform, whatever it is we want to call it today. Right? And if you'll remember, Netflix became an early expert, expert at this. Right? They're on every remote. They're on every television that you can tune into. And the very first connected app or a connected television was in 1998, so not that long ago. Right? LG, Netflix made its appearance on LG. But now, they're everywhere. They made, they made reach easy. The second, discovery. Right? And this is, this is somewhere where you need to match what the user wants to the content that's available. This is something that I think Amazon does better. Of course, they have data on all of us, and they have enough data to, to scrape, gosh, everything. So, and given, that, given that's the case, I think that they do discovery really well. Right? And their algorithms, algorithms obviously take, seek out the right matches. But the most important ingredient of all for us is the community. This is where we think the consumer needs to feel like they belong to something and they belong to something that they are seeking. And this is the reason I think broadcast networks spawned into cable nets and cable nets have spawned all of these niche SVOD platforms. Right? to serve an audience that spe seeks a specific kind of television, and this is where BritBox wins, by creating a sense of community and a sense of belonging to our audiences. But for each of these three conditions to serve our audience, one that demands that they get their British television fix when and how and where they want it, an audience that chooses the why and demands the what, it's we have to make sure that we understand the who and it's the who to which that we're serving up the, the access platforms, the discovery mechanisms, and importantly, what, is it, what it is that they seek as a, as a community. Right? I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you one more reel, if I can figure out how to bring it up. Let's get down to work. Expect to sizzle. Come with me, catch a rare type specimen. Cuddle up with a hesitant skeleton. We'll break our fast with friends. Listen up and you won't go wrong again. Put along on the first the song and then get to where the two ends meet. Come, 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 come along now. Run away from the humdrum. We'll go to a place that is safe from greed, anger, and boredom. We'll dance and sing till sundown At peace with abandon We'll sleep when the morning comes And we'll rise by the sound of the bird song Miss Bennett Mr. Darcy My name is Bouquet B-U-C-K-E-T So People think you're nice hundred percent The only response to get things going is Thank God Very convincing Come, 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 come along now Run away from the humdrum We'll go to a place that is safe from Greed, anger and boredom We'll dance and sing till sundown And feast with abandon We'll sleep when the morning comes And we'll rise
This, I think, is the perfect segue for us to talk about our second C, content. Content is the heartbeat of all of, all of these services that aim to distinguish themselves in unique ways. And yet we know that in today's world of where the platform is the lead, it's antithetical to brands. Right? So how, how are we doing this? We think that making sure that the right content belongs in the right platform is so important to making sure that we can win. Um, and thanks to the proliferation of British television from Downton Abbey to Crown to Catastrophe, thankfully, we know that there is, there is a specific kind of show and a specific kind of experience that the audience seeks. You know, not so long ago I watched, um, I think it was at CES two years back, when, um, if you'll remember when Ted Sarandos presented the Crown to a crowd much like yourselves. The, what he said was, he said, I'm gonna show you a clip and then he said, wait, this is not PBS, this is not the BBC. Right? He had to qualify, he had to qualify it with the fact that people associate certain things with certain things. And, and we know this. We know that we are a destination. We know that we create a connection where people are gonna say, aha, that's what I expect to watch on Bird Box. And, and, and just like that, on, with content as well, we, have, we believe that there are some pillars that it takes to win even in this game of, of content. It is the golden age of television. There is content everywhere you turn. Right? And, and I always say, it's like, you know, we use jargon. What is content? It's just shows. Right? And we've, you know, we've coined the phrase content because it's a, it's a good way to talk about short form, something that's on social, as well as something that we're watching in the movie theaters. But at the end of the day, it is, it is these shows, it is, it is a movie, it's, a, it's that, again, I'm gonna say content, but it is that piece of show that we, um, we emotionally connect with. And for us, so I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna I'm gonna talk about something else that you will, all, you will all instantly recognize. Last year in the US, if you looked at the top 10 shows, on, on television per the Nielsen ratings. Um, they ranged from, from Young Sheldon to Bull to Roseanne, right? Roseanne was number one. And it, I think number 10 was Bull, the CBS show. Some of you watched it. And, and if you looked at even the streaming services, again, you will, again, you'll recognize what you've read. Friends, The Office, the NBC version, not the British one. There's too few episodes in the British one so it could never make the top list. Right? Audiences do flock to what they know. Right? And, th and we know this. We know this repeatedly when you look at what happens. So we've made sure that we are gonna, we're gonna stock our service with what people recognize from Office, the British one, to classic Doctor Who, to Faulty Towers, and Morse, my personal favorite. We make sure that audiences can find what they know. This is the first pillar of, of our content strategy, to make sure that we have the known. Right? And it doesn't stop there. Again, in any given year, when you think about, th think about what, what audiences, we as audiences choose to do, we tune into what the now is, what's happening. Right? Last year, the royal wedding was in the top 10 viewed TV episode, not shows, episode. And the year before that, the presidential inauguration. Right? So the, the Royal Wedding was also among our top watched TV shows. I was, in, I was in LA, I remember. I was there for a meeting, up at 1 a.m., you know, very anxiously logging into my iPad to make sure the stream's gonna work, right? On the phone with the New York team who were up super early in the morning as well for them, making sure that nothing had gone wrong, calling London on Slack, because this was, this was gonna be a feat that we were gonna pull off. We had the ITV live stream that had to go into a, a satellite van somewhere that was just gonna pick up something else into our OVP. And all of this is happening while the, the two major broadcasters, this is a big event in the UK, right? And they have to pull this off for our little streaming service here in the US. So we're, everyone's anxiously working on all of this. And, and it was, you know, it was amazing because we, we sat there and we watched, we watched as the numbers went up and up and up. 
right? And you're like, wow, people are actually watching this and it's not crashing. Right? <laughs> and so, and you, you're sitting there because look, the reality is we, what we did was we did that in real time, British time, and then we replayed it again in Eastern time and in, on West Coast time. So people can wake up and feel like it's part of their day. They're watching it in real time and we wanted to make sure that they didn't feel like they got left behind and they didn't miss a beat. So we had a, we had a successful run at that, which gave, us, which gave us the gumption to believe that we can do this more. Right? This is, you all know this, it's not an easy feat to do live streaming. Technology hasn't made it easy. And by the way, in our world, actually rights don't make it easy. The world of television rights is ridiculously complicated. And we wish there would be a day where we could bring some of those shows in more real time. What, what we settle for today is we bring you Good Morning Britain by the time we can wake up in New York. So they watched it from 6 a.m. their time until whatever, until 9 a.m. So by the time we come into the office, it's live for our, our people here to watch. So that's why I'm really, really proud that we were able to cinch another, another show that I'm just gonna give you a look at. Okay, I don't know how to do this, sorry. Shining, it is hot here in central London for one of the most eagerly awaited events of the year. The paparazzi are in rapture as celebrities, VIPs and royalty are the first to experience this year's lavish garden designs and stunning plant displays. It's chic, it's glitzy, it's the Chelsea Flower Show. Really excited about this because we've been we've been struggling as a team to try and get the rights to this for the past gosh nearly three years now. So it's been it's been a, it's been a long time in coming. Um, and it last but not the least, by the way, so I just talked to you about the known the known shows the now, which is I think the thing the one thing that distinguishes BritBox from many others. And last but not the least, the new shows. Again, coming back to the US television landscape, um, the year before last, Bull and Young Sheldon were the only new shows on the top list, right? And again, I think you can argue that Young Sheldon's really not a new show, right? right? And they both made a comeback this year, right? And I think that began the, what I'm gonna call is, is something that we all know. It is, it is the new knowns that make a, a repeat showing it's in, in every year's top list. And we are, we are incredibly proud to sort of keep that going. We believe that we bring new shows to BritBox that can eventually become someone's known. And, and of course, also continuing the, the journey of having known shows that are also new, that are also now. This year we had Vera, we had Shetland, we had Gardner's World, all of which were incredibly uh, exciting for us because we, you all know this. You wait many, many months for Downton Abbey to appear on PBS. Right? We think we've shortened that time frame because we can. We plug right back into our parents and make this possible. Right? And um, the other exciting show that we have coming up very soon is a show that I'm a personal fan of and it's become a huge favorite of, of many at Bird Box. It's a show called Mum, and only the Brits will make a show about a 60-something new widow who's trying to find her footing again, and, I, and they do it so charmingly. This is um, played by the inimitable Leslie Manville, who I think is an amazing, amazing, versatile actress. Um, so I'm gonna show you again. I have a, I'm really excited that we have a first look that we can share with you. I think I'm supposed to do that and then click. <laughs> Sorry. I just finally figured it out. I'll figure it out by the time the ball ends. Oh, Christ. Hello. Sorry to keep you waiting. I was by the pool. 
How was your journey? Oh, fine. Yeah, a bit of trouble on the M25, but... I was wondering where you'd got to as I was sitting by the pool. Oh, sorry. Jason texted Derek to let him no, know, but... it's fine. I was just worried about you as I was sitting by the pool. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's got a pool. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, sorry, love. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah, this is incredible. Mum, the finale. I know, I'm so excited. So excited to have that. Um, so I know I've talked to you about the consumer and the content, uh, but I'd be remiss if I didn't talk to you about technology, right? After all, we are in a place where we should talk a little bit about that. And I'm going to tell you a little story, though, before I get there. Um, this last weekend, no, maybe it was two weekends ago, my husband and I spent a long time searching on the big three for something to watch. Right? So you keep scrolling, you keep scrolling, you find nothing. And then we give up, and we finally end up switching on to linear television. And something that comes, catches our eye, Death Wish, the Charles Bronson movie. <laughs> OK, fine. It seemed appropriate at that time, okay? <laughs> we had just been to Washington Heights to visit a friend the previous day. So it's like, oh, we should watch this. So we watch it, we enjoy it, it was fantastic. And, and, you know, and then suddenly we go, you know what? We just watched a movie where the main character's name is Kersey. So we should watch something else. And, and then we both remember that there is a show called Wycliffe, it's a British show called Wycliffe, where the secondary character's name is Kersey. And he's much more interesting than the primary character. And you go, great, let's find Kersey. So you go talking to Siri and go, Siri, find me, find me Wycliffe. And I don't think it recognized it because for what it's worth, Wycliffe is spelt with a W-Y. So I think it was expecting us to say Wycliffe. <laughs> it didn't. And so in this world of deep linking and all of those amazing platform opportunities that we have, after, after a little bit of a struggle, we find it. And of course, we end up watching it on Breadbox, and thus began our binge for the next few days. Right? And I think that this is, this is the world we are all living, living in today, right? Where we're going to find where, where someone and how someone finds a content and, and where someone ends up watching it is, is going to be platform agnostic. You are going to come at it from your, your computer, your phone. And sometimes you're, I'm on my Roku and I want to begin watching it on my Apple TV elsewhere, which, by the way, I can't do today. And no, that's not true. On my app, I can. <laughs> so it's a, and I think that's the, that's the, that's the world that we are in. And I'm going to, but it, it made me think about the fact that this Wycliffe connection made me think about the fact that our team at BritBox has been extremely successful in finding connections. You saw, you saw the Firth. You saw the Firth video that we played for you just a little bit ago. And our, our editorial team is incredibly clever at finding these connections and surfacing them in a manner that makes it palatable for people to watch. Right, so I'm going to show you one other thing that my team did very recently, and you will know why it was recent and why it was in the, in the diaspora, so to speak, here. Making your bones by seeking thrones can cost a guy his head. Even a star with lots of credits often ends up dead. <laughs> it's so hard to say goodbye. But there's a place where every face looks just like it was new. Whether you're poisoned, blown to bits, or crossbowed on the loo.
And so this is why on BritBox, it doesn't take someone 18 minutes to find something to watch. Now you all know what I'm talking about. People, so we, we focus our audience's energies on making sure that they're watching and making sure that they're, they're, they're spending their time as fruitfully as possible. And we put together connect, collections like these and connections like these where we can. I mean, again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw some stats at you, so bear with me while I read it. It's a, you know, we've done some research recently, and I'm borrowing some of this from the UK, so, so let me know if it rings true with you or not. And so essentially, the number one thing that people say they want in an SVOD platform is content, right? So I think we all do that. Most people, if we're in this world, we hopefully we do that well. And following, following content, it's a stable video delivery, right? Behind that is what they call cool functionality, which is whether it's chain play or making sure that they have profiles. And interestingly, U UI is dead last in that list. And, and so when you think about that, it's content followed by video delivery. We, want, we wanted to make sure that we were focusing on all the right pieces to make this possible. So the content part, we felt like we had. I mean, so when you think about what, what, did we, what did we want to do in terms of the video platform? So our secret sauce is very, very, very simple. Keep it simple, don't reinvent the wheel, and keep them watching. And, and how, do we, how do we do this? We do this by putting together the best in breed players. The BBC iPlayer is our OVP on the back end. Massive Interactive build our apps for the front end. We, we have Gigya for identity management. We have BlueShift for CRM, and we have Vindicia for subscription management. We're a big believer that don't, don't rebuild something you don't have to. Many, there's many out there who do things much better than we ever will. So we just customize, we customize the parts that we think are important for us, which is to make sure that we can deliver the right content to the right person. And, and we think our formula has worked. You all know this. We, we're very pleased that we've done well in, the, in our short two years and two months. Something like that, two years, to your, to your life. And, and we're keen to see how we, how we grow. Um, I'm gonna leave you with the television spot for BritBox um, that, that's airing on many television networks in the US right now. And I'll open it up for questions. Okay. Welcome to BritBox the biggest streaming collection of British TV ever. From brand new shows to loved classics. Oh, that's good news. Very good. And in true British style, we'd like to say... I am so sorry. Sorry, dear. Please allow me to apologize. Sorry. For being irresistibly bingeable. Sorry about that, darling. Unapologetically brilliant British telly. I'm not the truth. Escape to BritBox. Start your free trial today at BritBox.com. Thank you. Go ahead. I'm a huge BritBox fan. Uh -uh. Thank you. And I used to watch old shows, and especially comedy. Uh -huh. And I uh, found you um, through um, Amazon. I uh -huh. find right. uh, you know, an old Amazon show, an old British mm -hmm. show, and I was forced to subscribe. Hmm. Yeah. Large number of subscribers, but I'm anxious to see your slides. I see you have five slides there, and I've only seen spots. Is there anything yet you can share from those slides? So, unfortunately, those slides are not mine. I think they're someone else's. Oh, okay. So we chose. Look, we 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 struggled with should we do slides, right? It's easy to do this. Put up put up something there and talk about it, right? And then we chose not to do that because we felt like it gets a little pedantic. Right. Having said that, thank you. We do know that um, Amazon, like one of the things we talk to Amazon about a lot when we talk about our platform is that Amazon surfaces by a search, right? So essentially you search for a show and then they'll tell you the means in which to find it. But just like you said, you found other things to watch as a result of that. What we have learned is that the formula of our success is the fact that we have all of this, not a specific show. 
right? So when we say, it's like, yes, we understand that there's one show, but the, for us, it's about the aggregation of all of these shows that makes us what we are. Yes, please. So we do have, um, we do have, uh, so I'm, by the way, I'm so sorry, I was told that I should repeat the questions. So you, you were asking, the, the movement right now is for platforms like ourselves to create our own content, and is this something BritBox is gonna do as well? Um, so yes, BritBox does do originals. Um, last year we had our first commissioned original, which is Bletchley Circle. You may know the show, from when it aired and, or from the Benedict Cumberbatch movie. Oh, gosh, why am I drawing a blank on the name of the movie? You know which one I'm talking about. Um, the Benedict Cumberbatch movie about the World War II. It's Imitation Game, that's it, it's Imitation Game. So it's based on the, it's, so Bletchley Circle is, is, the, is a television show about those code breakers. And so we, um, we did a, an original of, of the post-war, what happens to the code breakers and how they can, they're transported into a different code breaking environment in San Francisco. So we, we did that. We also did Click and Collect, which is a Stephen Merchant show. We also did a, a slow TV version called Luminous London, which was about the lights of London during Christmas. And uh, we just announced that we co-commissioned a show called Barking Murders with uh, BBC One. So we are, we're gonna get into it. Some of it will be Bird Box originals, and I'm sure you all know this, when some of the other streaming services of originals doesn't mean that it didn't air on TV in another country. Yes. I'm curious about uh, the economics and the 6.99 price point. You see, as you stated in the beginning, we're, we're all subscribing to more and more services, but it becomes this point where a willingness to pay diminishes quickly. And when I think about your service in the U.S., you have a, you have a somewhat limited market of people who might want to <laughs> stream British content exclusively. And so I wonder, is that, is that price point um, architected around the economics of what it will take to make the business profitable? And is that balanced out with the price points of the other streaming services? And just curious how you think about that and set that. So I'm gonna repeat that the best I can. This is about the price point of 6.99 and um, how, how it's gonna work in a world where people are gonna have multiple streaming services and does this architect towards a profitable outcome. Captured it. So uh, what I can tell you, interestingly, while I can't share specifics with you, I can tell you we're incredibly pleased with where we are today. And I, I would, be, I mean, I would be sharing stuff with you that I probably shouldn't. But we're super, super, super thrilled. So I can tell you that the six ninety nine is not a problem at all. Um, I can also tell you that um, I do believe that at some point people are going to make choices about what they're gonna give up and what else they're gonna take in its place. We, we fully expect that there's gonna be a segment of our audience that's gonna do substitutional churn. We know this, right? But what we do know is that with, the, with where we've seen our audience grow, we believe that the appetite for British television continues to grow. And I don't, I don't need a multi tens of millions of people in order to be profitable don't at all. So I think that the model, the model has been unfortunately stacked against us when you hear what else is happening out there. The math, I always tell people the math is very simple. If you know, if you know what it is, the number of people you're trying to get, you can work back your CPA so you know what your marketing spend is going to be. You know how many hours you have, you know what content spend is. So it's, the, the math is not that hard, right? And, and and sorry, but to this room, but technology is commoditized. So you can sort of back into the pieces and you go exactly what you're going to get into. Um, yes. A lot of classic content has not been remastered yet. So are you stuck with 480p or does the BBC redirect it for you or already in the So again, I'm going to repeat the question. A um, lot of the content has not been remastered, a lot of the older content has not been remastered, and are we gonna stick with the 480p? Is that, 
and accurate. Um, gosh, I wish I had more progressive content than I do. So much of the stuff is interlaced. So much of the stuff is D8, D2. Um, it's, a, it's the bane of my existence. Um, it is, I mean, I'm very personally very passionate about this. A few years back in my old job at BBC, I literally called the archive department of the BBC and I said, there has to be 16 millimeters somewhere. I'll come find it. Right? And I, I went and I found the old 16 millimeters for House of Cards, which you will all see in its, in its unbelievably glorious, glorious color now. Or, and marble. I did it for marble, to be perfectly honest, because I wanted to watch Joan Hickson's marbles. And, and the bonus was finding House of Cards. And, and, um, but I struggle. I struggle with this because we find content. And unfortunately, the, in the olden days, and I'm sure you've all read articles about this, the BBC just didn't save tapes. Right? They didn't save, save the originals. So we have audio originals, and you can't find the tapes. So you're, you're living in a world where you're like, I don't know what to do with this. I really want to show this piece of content, but I can't. Right? And so when we did the classic Doctor Who, we made the purposeful choice to say, this, this episode's not available. Right? We did not want to insult the audience who knew more than us and knew that there was, there was an episode between this and this. Right? And we had to say, sorry, this, this episode doesn't exist. Or we put up the audio where it was available. So I'm struggling. I literally just, the, um, Tim, who just did an interview with me before I walked in here, asked me about this, and I said, gosh, someone help me. I said, I'll give you all the D8 or D2 tapes. Can you convert this into something better? I said, I want to watch them in better quality than I can. So, wish there was a better answer. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm curious about uh, Acorn TV. Do you consider them your competition, like they're being your first and building the British business? How do you relate to that? Okay. So um, I'm going to repeat the question. You asked about Acorn TV, and do we, do we consider them competition, and how do we relate to them? Um, I'm, I'm personally a fan of Acorn TV and have been for many years. Um, having said that, many of the shows that were on Acorn are no longer on Acorn, and that's the reason I had them. Acorn today is less than 50% British, and um, I think it's just their, that was their choice to go into... Australian and New Zealand and Irish shows. We continue to remain focused on British television. And, and so I would say, no, we are unique in our space. And, and I believe that we have a formula. Yes, there is always the first mover advantage. And I think you will see that in every, every market that you turn to. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Today we are only in the U.S. and Canada, and we are, as you know, we've um, the U.K. launch or imminent launch has been announced, and um, there's people working very hard at that right now. So you asked about rest of Europe. Yes, it's on our roadmap. There are many, um, many territories we're looking at right now, and and balancing out. Honestly, it's balancing out the businesses that exist today in those markets, be they linear, be they just a partnership with um, either a streamer or a broadcaster in, the, in that country. So we're balancing all of that right now. Yeah. Good, okay. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.